Okay, I'm Brian. Uh, welcome to another English 101 Big Idea video. Uh, Got to adjust this here a little bit. Yeah, I'm Brian, the host of this little show, and today I'm set up in the middle of my uh, local street, uh, and I wanted to talk about uh, pages 233 to 238 in Old Humble and 190, uh, 186 to 190 if you're New Humble. Looking at my script. So uh, let's get started. So as you can see, I am in the middle of my local street here. Uh, my house is just over here, some other houses and you know whatnot going on. The reason why I'm set up here is I wanted to shoot a video in a different kind of way today. And what I'm going to talk to you about today with about likely objections and refutes is a different kind of academic writing style sort of move. Kind of like making a video in the middle of a street and at some point there's going to be a car come by and, and probably a golf cart as well. So uh, on some occasions when we think about writing and in life in general, we have to think about doing things differently to make an impression. And that's what likely, obje that's what likely objections are about within our, our academic writing styles. It's a way for us to do something just a little bit different to reach our audience. And so, whoa, that was like a big bee floating around my head. <laughs> So one of the ways you might uh, in real life maybe do something a little bit different, like maybe when you like head to a job interview, you know, you put on a tie and uh, you make sure you're good to go so people know that you're serious about uh, whatever job that you're applying for. Sorry, I thought there was a car coming up the street. Yeah, so uh, you do this as a way to separate yourself from others. So that's one way. The second thing we might do differently is to put on our thinking cap and uh, get a book when we need to, you know, study it up real good. So then we get the book out we study things close, we spend some time, and we spend some energy on figuring out all the things that we need to do to pass that test because we want to get into the certain school or get a certain grade. Uh, we do that as an extra step, as a way to let people know how serious we are about our work. Again, thinking cap. It's my thinking cap. And usually when I put my thinking cap on, it's usually on backwards uh, as a way to, you know, help my brain. Okay, so let's, uh, let's tie this up. Uh, oh. Pun intended? No pun intended, I guess? Uh, I don't know. Hey, so when we think about likely objections and refutes, this is about taking extra steps to let your readers know that you care about what they think and what they say. So when you run up against um, ideas that you don't agree with or don't understand fully, but you know it's on another side of an argument, that's something you should totally embrace uh, as a way to sort of round out your argument and make it a little bit more fully dimensional. So. Uh, the likely objections and refutes is really two parts. So the first part then is um, admitting that there's this idea out there in the world that makes sense to a lot of people. And then you address that. And then the refute part basically says, hey, I understand this is a great idea, but here's why I think my idea might be a little bit different. So when you begin to sort of roll these two ideas into an academic essay, then we're starting to really help answer the questions that we want to um, get to within our essay. Hi, uh, just doing some teaching stuff here. Uh, got people walking up and down the street. I knew this would happen, but that's okay. So to round out this video, make sure when you think about likely objections and refutes, you got to include them and you got to make sure uh, that they work in a way that reaches out to folks within your audience that says, hey, I'm listening. So, okay, that's all I have for this video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. And uh, yeah, see you in the next one. Peace.